It's the fifth Box to Row countdown to kick off, and we're having a blast. We've got a couple of more coaches uh, to get to. So far, we've been joined by Trey Oliver, the head football coach at North Carolina Central, and Sam Washington, the head football coach at North Carolina A&T. It's interesting that these three coaches, we have these three coaches on first, because they're, you know, they have a, a real connection, as, of course, Sam Washington uh, was their defensive coordinator when they both played at North Carolina Central. Of course, Trey Oliver and my next guest, who, of course, is Adrian Jones, is the head football coach at Shaw in his sixth season. Prior to coming to Shaw, he was the uh, a, an assistant coach at North Carolina Central and also, before that, a high school coach right here in Durham coached at Southern where they won the 2013 state title what's going on coach jones what's going on you make me feel old when you put all those numbers <laughs> up man <laughs> not well i, I got I, I got you so that I, I, I don't know well, you know uh so w with that i want to start here the last year and a half for you your staff the coaches how have y'all you all been able to make the adjustment because at the end of the day you haven't played football in about 20 months or so um, it, it's been a uh, it's been a, a tough time, but at the end of the day, the structure it helped us out to be structured. Our guys mentally, we got mentally prepared. We got bigger, faster, stronger, and we we're able to sit back and watch football for a year, even though we didn't play. But they took the game away for those guys, and it makes them want want it even more. So I think it really helped us out. Yeah, 2019. Let's let's go back to 2019. Um, it's a good season, right? Your, your best season. Right, six and four on the cusp of the Southern Division. Um, you know, just talk about. Let's talk about that season and again your best season to that to this point at Shaw. Oh, uh, it, it was a good season, and like I told our guys, it wasn't it wasn't our time. We were right there on the cusp, but we weren't ready to be champs. I didn't think. You know, we had to go back to the drawing board and, and figure some things out. But it was great to have a winning season because it helped out recruiting, recruiting wise. We got some guys that. We normally wouldn't have wouldn't have got you know at the end of the day, but um, we beat a couple of uh, federal states of the world, the Bowie states of the world, and some guys that they were really good football players. But um, it's just credit to my uh, coaching staff for doing a great job of recruiting. Let's talk about recruiting because to me it seems like you'd have an in on recruiting as a former high school coach. Uh, I, I I remember I can't remember if it was this year or last year. I you one of the players you got I texted you. I was like, man, that's a really good get. You guys have really been able to recruit some really good athletes to come to Shaw, and I mean the thing is, it, you're, you're, there's a lot working against you yeah. at Shaw. Yet it's a special place, and you're able to recruit special athletes. Well, like I said, it's the, it's the coaching staff. Um, a true story. One of the parents, you know, I was talking about we don't have a lot of bells and whistles, and she stood up and she was like, Coach. She pointed at all my coaches uh, that were standing up. She like, y'all are the bells and whistles, you know. So that's credit to our, our, our coaching staff that we got great coaches. And who doesn't want to be right downtown Raleigh? You know, it's a beautiful area. And a lot of people don't know about it. But once they get there, it's like, oh, man, this is a great city. Yeah. So Sidney Gibbs comes back for you, running back, rushed for over 1,000 yards back in 2019. Um, speak about him. It's a breakout season for him. Oh, he had a great season. You know, we we're fortunate enough to get Sidney Gibbs. And, um, you know, our first thousand yard rusher since I've been there. But uh, people don't know that they're, they're, they're like, we got a four headed, four headed monster back there. We got Tevin Perry, who's back, who, who got injured. You got, uh, 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 we got uh, Andre, who's, who's from Dunbar up in, in Baltimore. And then we got a walk on by the name of, of, of Tay is doing a great job. So we're fortunate enough to have some guys that can really play. Yeah, Perry comes back, played at the same high school as Tariq Cohen, if I'm not absolutely not, not mistaken about that. Yeah. Um, so the quarterback, Torin Campbell, threw for close to 1,800 yards, 19 touchdowns back in 2019. Again, it's a, it's a little while to have off, right? But you're always learning. So what are you seeing from him in practice in terms of how he's getting better? Uh, well, our thing was, you know, he, he threw for 19 touchdowns, but he also threw for 10, 10 interceptions. I didn't want to say that. But, and, yeah, but, he, but he we did. definitely got to protect the ball. And I, I'm constantly on him. You know, being a defensive back, we want interceptions. But as a head coach, I don't want you to throw interceptions. <laughs> so um, we're a stickler about that, you know, not trying to force balls in, in, in into tight coverages and stuff like that. But he's been a good general. Um, you know, the first week he came in and was – 
doing some things we didn't like, you know, sat down with him man to man and had a talk with him and he sky's the limit now. He's he's doing everything we asked him to do. Uh, before I talk about your defensive backfield, a young man I want to talk about that I mean I, to be quite frank, I didn't think he was I didn't think he was still playing. Especially with all the transfers and all that and you didn't play and guys moving all over the place. But Devin Hunt comes back for you. He's a boxer all American in 2018. He was not on the preseason all CIAA team. I know that had to bite at him, but to give him also more motivation. Definitely gave him um, motivation. Um, you know, he has a nickname of a, of the uh, of the human um, what is it? The human uh something that Stan <laughs> uh, uh gave him, but human GPS. But uh, he's he's definitely motivated. He's back healthy 100%. Um, he is our leader. He's in grad school, getting his degree in education. What better way to finish up your career, getting a, a, a master's degree before you finish? But uh, a lot of NFL scouts are looking at him. But the funny thing is, not too many people in the CI knew that he was coming back. Ah. Yeah, because you, to the point he got injured in 2019. So that, I mean, he's, that's an uphill battle to come back from that injury. Do you? I guess you won't really know if he's 100% until you all get out there, but in terms of what you've seen from him uh, in camp, how, how is he looking? Honestly, he is better than what he was in 2019. Uh, he is faster, he's stronger, and he's a coach on the field. When we have meetings, he's the guy running our defensive meetings. That's what you want in a football player, a linebacker, is being that coach on the field. And I think that year off and looking from the outside in, what we've been talking about, you know, to our guys, I think that really helped them and motivated them. So that defensive backfield, Kevin Sherman, Jaleel Scroggins, both are preseason All CIAA guys. Um, I know that's I know that's got to make you feel especially good. I mean, as the, of course you're the head coach, but I mean as a former defensive back, um, you know, talk about these two guys anchoring that defensive backfield. Well, you you don't meet too many guys that start as a freshman, started as freshmen and ended their career as starters, and and they're they're generals in the backfield. You know. Jaleel Scroggins has a story. You know, this young man was that got shot, you know, uh, in 2018, and we didn't think he was going to play in 2019. He was literally on his deathbed on my birthday, and it's just he has a story to tell. You know, he's graduated, and he's getting this master's in accounting at North Carolina State. And not too many kids can say that, and it's going to have an $80,000 job when he gets done. Uh, Kevin Sherman, yeah, I can't say much more about him, but it's just a football guy. He loves football. He, he breathes, he sleeps it, and I'm just fortunate enough to have those two guys on our football team. So who am I – can you speak to – I mentioned a couple of guys. You also talked about some of the other running backs in addition to Sidney Gibbs. Who are some guys you're expecting to really step up in 2021? Well, uh, I won't name a guy, but uh, our defensive line, uh, Daz Sturkey, uh, D'Angelo uh, McMillan, were guys – Daz Sturkey is actually on the all-conference team um, – those two guys are, are veterans, and I look forward to them playing. But our D-line, we got depth, and that's one of the biggest things. And, and, and what we're not used to is our offensive line. We're probably the biggest offensive line in Division II football. And they're young, but they're, they're mean and aggressive. How are you growing as – I mean, obviously some adversity specifically with respect to COVID, not playing in 20, not playing in, in spring of 21, six seasons in now. How, how are you growing as a head coach? Um, I think I'm growing. It's, I'm a lot more patient. You know, uh, when I'm at my younger days, I was a, a lot animated, you know, uh, yelling at guys and stuff. And I think that I, I've kind of changed that, trying to be that, that, that buffer when, you know, my other assistants get on those coach, on those players. I try to come back and love them up. So that's one of the things. I want my guys to know that I love them. But at the end of the day, I think that my patience has gotten a lot better. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, ask Coach Oliver this about you all's playing days at North Carolina Central. Uh, again, Coach Odoms had no idea that Norfolk State played with you guys as well under uh, well, Sam Washington was the defensive coordinator. What do you remember about those days? And that was in, uh, to Coach Oliver's uh, point that he made earlier. That was an excellent defense. Oh, absolutely one of the best to ever play, you know, uh, at, at North Carolina Central. But the one thing I remember is that uh, – I remember Coach Washington talking to us and was like, man, y'all going to be – you're going to be coaches one day. I remember having conversations. And we both were laughing like, yeah, all right, we ain't going to be no coaches. But at the end of the day, if it wasn't for Coach Washington and, 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 and his expertise at defense, I don't think either me, Coach Oliver, or Coach Odoms would be, be doing what we're doing today. But he taught us the game. 
and, and demanded us to be uh, good coaches on the football field. And I think that has transitioned to us being head coaches. Um, when I don't did when get play in the spring? I'm not even sure. They did. They oh okay. So yes. that for, it's a little bit of a difference. Even if they played whatever amount of games, four games, maybe five, whatever it was. What is your preparation like for them? Because I mean, in theory, they would be ahead of you because they've played as recent as three, four, five months ago. Yep, and we've been able to, to dissect them, been able to look at them. But uh, it's a good football team, ranked 24 in Division Two football. We're going to know who we are the first game. But uh, we played them in 2016. I think they beat us 56 nothing. I can guarantee you that that's not gonna, it's not going to look that way. <laughs> but we're going to have to go out and compete. You know, we're going to have to play disciplined football, and we can't make mistakes against a good football team like Wingate. But we'll definitely be prepared. Bears, of course, open the season on Saturday, September the 4th at Wingate. Uh, as a matter of fact, again, in his sixth season as the head football coach, of Shaw is Adrian Jones, who joins us here on the countdown to kickoff. Appreciate the time, Coach Jones. We'll catch up with you during the course of the season. Thanks for having me. All right.